how you finish the the defensive principles and whatnot pregame. I'm just curious with a guy like Harden, you're sort of in a damned if you do, damned if you don't choice with how you attack him. What went into wanting to apply pressure to him around their perimeter and sort of living with what the other guys could get? Say it again. With Harden, we well, kind of damned if you do, if you pressure him or leave him alone. Why do you guys feel like you wanted to attack him with doubles beyond the perimeter? This felt like doing it. I mean, it was our game plan coming into it. So um, everything we did, he picked us apart. So we blitzed him. We switched and guarded him regularly. We switched to fire. We zoned him. <laughs> and uh, we picked us apart. Everything we did, they had an answer for it. So, I mean, you know, they play well. What you just overall, considering you don't live it on the court, a couple days of work. Can't hear you. Considering he'd only been on the court for a couple days, what'd you think of Marcus in his return? I, I thought it was great start, and he got a little tired in the third quarter. He had another, you know, great burst of energy. Um, you know, scoring 24 points in 27 minutes, you know, so it was good. You know, we had him offensively, but you can see he got tired, especially in that first half. I played him too many minutes in that first half. Can you talk about the play of the young players in the fourth quarter, how they got you guys back in the game? Um, just the energy, you know, coming off the back to back yesterday. Um, our young guys, like I said, I knew it's gonna be, you know, play hard and scrap and compete. Um, they're gonna make some mistakes, and um, but just seeing those guys get out there and play the way they did, you know, I was just happy to see that. But like I said, you know, um, hard and seeing every defense in the league that you could possibly see, and um, he just he picked us apart tonight. Before the game, Steve Nash was saying that um, young guys like that could be dangerous um, because, especially if they get some belief behind them. I mean, is that fourth quarter sort of an example of that? Um, yeah. I mean, the the game was out of reach by then. You know, you make a you know twelve zero run or fourteen zero run, you are still down ten. You know, so but you know, like I said, you come in, play hard, and play with that kind of effort and fly around. Um, you know, you can get stuff done. And we saw that in a Sacramento game. And um, so, you know, they had the opportunity. They, they're making the most of it. Um, just right now, just offensively, we don't have a lot of organization, you know, especially not having a, a true backup point guard. And, um, so, you know, these guys just playing and learning on the fly a little bit. What's um, obviously Harden seen everything, but for you know Keon has never seen Harden before. <laughs> what's what's a, what is it like for these guys to kind of go up against somebody like that for the first time, and how I mean, beneficial is it to kind of like get that out of the way? I mean, it's probably somebody to look up to. You know, these young guys and looking up to, you know, seeing you know James play, you know, all these years and um, be able to play against them and compete against them. You know. Um, you know, it's, it's, a real, it's extremely fun. You know, I've been in that situation before myself and just a young guy, just, you know, finally get a chance to get on the floor with somebody you look up to and, you know, sometimes idolize. And, um, you know, they're just enjoying the moment. Like I said, they're taking advantage of it. You know, they're playing well. And, um, you know, I just got to try to keep putting these guys in a position where um, we can have some kind of organization, you know, because it is hard without a, a point guard for that second unit right now. And so, but, you know, outside of that, they're doing a good job. How much of it is kind of like a, a trial by fire, um, not just for the, the players on the court, but for the coaching staff trying to figure out, you know, what what rotations kind of work best with one another out there? <laughs> um, yeah, just give me a three or four game sample, and I'll be able to figure something out. I just okay. need to see it. I need to see it, and then um, when I see it for a few games, I'll be able to figure something out, rotations or how we want to play. Um, and, um, you know, right now, like I said, without having – you know, a backup point guard, you know, I don't want to run blade into the ground too much, you know, thought he played a lot in the first half as well. So, um, you know, we just got to, you know, find ways to, you know, sell that unit down and second unit down and just, you know, make them comfortable and kind of play through guys and um, put Serge in a tough spot as well, because, you know, he don't have a guy who can make a play for him where, you know, in that second unit, Isaiah was good for that second unit because he can make plays for guys. So um, we're struggling with that right now. So we just got to figure that part out because, you know, when, when um with Reggie out when we had PG, PG held on the basketball, but now with you know both of those guys out, you know, it makes it a little tougher. <clears throat> Eric's looked pretty good as a lead guard, kind of just um r- running things out there. Um it hasn't always been super super seamless out there when him he and Reggie are say it again. Out. It hasn't always been super seamless, like when he oh. and Reggie are out there. How do you kind of you know when Reggie's able to come back, maybe incorporate them both together based off what you've seen from Eric the last couple of games? 
Well, I think, you know, um, Eric's strength is just because he has his own unit, he has the ball in his hands. And, you know, when he was starting, you know, he said he did a good job, but I just thought offensively he was never in a, in a, in a true flow of the game because, you know, he starts the point guard, but you don't have the ball in your hands. So um, with him coming off the bench and having his own unit, having the ball in his hands, he was good. And then when Reggie went out, you know, starting the game, having his own unit, starting the game with the ball in his hands, um, has been good for him as well. So you kind of find that flow and that rhythm, you know, as a point guard by having the basketball in your hands. Hey, Ty, that second quarter, it seemed like Brooklyn really upped their physicality. Their, their switch and made everything difficult, injury passes, movement of any kind. Uh, how do you combat uh, the way they play defense? So, like, What can you do to generate more movement on and off the ball uh, for I gotta your players? Figure it out. I haven't figured it out yet. I'm saying with no point guard, it's just, you know, it's tough because you can't call a play. So we just, I just got to come up with just a couple sets that they can just kind of run outside of delay the whole game and um, just, you know, make them comfortable. But like we said, we haven't figured that part of it out yet. You know, when teams switch with that second unit, it's going to be tough. I guess to that point, with the back of point guard or a point guard, <clears throat> Reggie, is there an expectation he'll be at all able to join you guys for that Boston part of the trip or is that? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, something about his testing, but if it don't go well tonight, then I doubt it. So, um, yeah, he might miss the next three games. So we'll see how his test results come back today. Recordings.